Um, all right, to, to focus a little more on technology for a minute, if you walk around this the floor, there's just amazing innovation happening, all from agriculture and precision agriculture all the way through to consumer products, goods, and smart kitchens and all right. kinds of stuff. Um, uh, I think one of the emerging technologies that, from my vantage point, holds the biggest potential to transform how we eat is gene editing. Um, not, not GMOs exactly. It's actually, you know, manipulating the current genome of seed to enhance nutrition, reduce water needs, all these. And it's cheap and easy. Um, and now it could affect everything we eat. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that technology? Are these the kind of tools that are going to be vital to solve these problems? Or do you think what we have now is enough? Because people are just starting to wrap their heads around these kind of emerging technologies. Well, well you know, uh, you know, this debate around genetically modified foods uh, is, I know, a very controversial one. The approach that I took when I was president of the United States is in the same way that I would let the science determine my policies around climate change. I try to let the science determine my attitudes about uh, food production and new technologies. Mm -hmm. And Precisely because, as I said before, people are very sensitive about um, food and what they're feeding their families. Uh, I think it's, it's okay for us to be cautious about how we approach these new technologies and genetic modifications. But I don't think we can be closed off to it. I don't think we can be closed-minded to it. Uh, the truth is, is that humanity has always engaged in genetic modifications. Right? The, the rice we eat or the corn we eat or the wheat we eat does not look like what corn or wheat or rice looked like a thousand years ago. And that's because humanity continually... Uh, learned from experience and once the scientific revolution took place the renaissance took place we started realizing that we could uh, not just discover things by accident but actually put in place systems to of discovery and, and the scientific method so we can't stop now uh, in uh, discovering new things i do think we have to have some safeguards in how we approach it Part of what Sam was referring to is uh, the technologies around gene editing, gene splicing, all those uh, mechanisms to, to, to change the fundamental ways in which uh, life organizes itself. Uh, that's advancing very quickly and it's very cheap. Um, the, the barriers to entry are not as high as they used to be. Yeah. And so thinking about how we do this in the food context in an appropriate way, in a controlled way, to make sure that we get the benefits without the unintended consequences, that is an appropriate area for policymakers to, uh, to examine and work with industry and work with science to figure out. But I don't think that we can just cut it all off. Um, and, and the GMO debate that took place in the United States as well as here in Europe, uh, I worry a little bit that somehow, sometimes the conversation has just gotten cut off. Uh, as opposed to, let's see what the facts are. But again, you understand where the distrust comes from. There was a time when you know, the tobacco industry assured us that cigarettes were great for you. And you know, there have been times where pharmaceutical companies said that uh, something wasn't harmful, and then it turned out that they had been doctoring and, and, and manipulating the data, uh, and, and people were, were severely harmed. So, and and when, when it comes to genetic modifications, what we also have to look at is how is it going to impact in the broader environment. But it's here, it's going to come anyway. Yeah. So we might as well make sure that we have a smart discussion about how uh, how we proceed, yeah. how we think about it. I think it
um, part of the part of the reason why unhealthy food is cheaper than healthier food is all the innovation and investment uh, in research for decades, right? right? Um, which has led to huge efficiencies and increased right. yields per acre. Where in fruits and vegetables, it's pennies right. compared. Um, the other, I think, big uh, transformation was the mechanization of the farm, particularly for large commodity crops. Now you can plant thousands of acres, water them, and harvest them, and there doesn't have to be a farmer anywhere near that. And those technologies really are still at its infancy. I mean, they're going to get better and better. Um, as we start to see possibilities to bring those technologies to fruits and vegetables, for example, which right now are very labor intensive, meaning a lot of people That's why are them. employed to do that. That's why the prices are higher. How do you, and this is a tension that's playing out throughout our entire society, uh, where technology is just replacing jobs. How do you balance those in your thinking? How should we be thinking about jobs um, and then efficiencies around health and wellness for, for food and vegetables? Well, well, let me divide up the question. Um, First of all, in everything we've been talking about today, the issue of inequality, both in, within countries and between countries, is absolutely critical. If we do not pay attention to the increasing inequality that exists, and that technology and globalization is accelerating, then there will be a backlash and a resistance to technology and change and globalization because people will feel left behind. And that is true across the board. Uh, if people feel as if they don't have control over their lives, their children don't have a good future, uh, then they will resist efforts to deal with climate change, because right now I'm concerned about feeding my child. Right? Uh, that's, it's a luxury to worry about climate change. You have to be able to have enough to eat before you start worrying about what's going to happen to the planet 30 years from now. When it comes to health care, what we just described about personalized medicine, right? if, if we start getting to a point where the very wealthy are living 10 years or 15 or 20 years longer than poor people in the same country because they can't afford those same technologies, you will see massive disruptions through the political system because people will find that completely unjust and they will be right. right. So we can't ignore making sure that everybody has some ability to access the wonders of this new world. 